Well, welcome back to another video today. We are doing a little pan fishing, going for crappies, bluegills. Hopefully there's some around. Hopefully we can catch a couple for you guys. We're gonna try to make this a quick operation. I did get locked into this place. A couple videos back, I will leave it linked up above in the corner. But bluegills and crappies are the objective. We might catch an occasional bass, crappies and bluegills. We're gonna quickly work our way down around this corner and back to where we've caught them before. But first things first, we do gotta check a couple of these spots right here. Before this got all flooded, there was a whole bunch of weeds that were growing. Oh my God, what was that? That scared me. <laughs> like I was saying, there was a whole bunch of weeds right around here. And now that the water's back down, those weeds should just barely be under the surface. Normally with these like swimming style baits, like a paddle tail or a curly tail, I normally won't use a bobber, but since I have such a, like a heavy head, um, I'm using a bobber just to keep it up. I'm gonna be able to reel it a lot slower and keep that lure in the strike zone a lot longer. If I didn't use the bobber, that thing would be sinking so fast and I'd have to be reeling it so fast to keep it up that I don't know if these fish would ever get time to see it or uh, chase after and eat it. So there's a little tip for you there. Walking through spider webs, it's a good sign. That means no one's been back here. It's another little tip for you. If you can get your bait where there's a spider web, you know no one's casted there in a while. Just a little, just a little tidbit there. A lot of times up against like docks like this or pilings, there'll be spider webs like right here. You probably can't see them. But there's a nice spider web right there. So now I know no one's put their bait there because if they put their bait there, my line wouldn't be sitting on that spider web. Kind of how I'm working my bobbers. I'm moving my bobber about a foot at a time, but the weight of my jig kind of pulls my bobber back about six inches. So I'm really only pulling it about six inches at a time. I'm kind of pulling it, letting it sit, kind of letting that jig head catch back up. Pull on a foot, let it wait, let it wait. Pull it a foot, let it wait. I thought I was honestly just gonna come here and start crashing. That is not the case. We are fishing a tidal river, and um, I don't know if you guys can see on this bank, but there's like a line that's about six inches to a foot up of like water. Let me go down here, it might be a little easier to see. Okay, that might be a little easier. But right where like the shoreline and the water meet, right above it there's like eight inches of like a water line. So we're just coming off the high tide, it is starting to come down. I don't know if that's good or not. I don't know too much about tide fishing. So what I do know is fish normally do not like no water moving at all. So the water is coming down, so that means the water is moving out. I don't know if incoming tide or outgoing tide is better. If you guys know, drop a comment down below. When is your guys' favorite times to fish around a tide? Doesn't matter if it's for bass, pike, striper, anything. I kind of just want to know when the fish are active. Okay, we are just going to take a couple more casts. Kind of making some crazy casts now. Just trying to see if we can pluck one off. I was really surprised there was none back by those pillars. <laughs> like I was mentioning earlier, I do need to get out of here pretty decently early tonight because I do not want to get locked in. It looked like the sprinklers were on and the last time I was here when the sprinklers were on is uh, when I got locked in. I'm working my way back out of here. Probably honestly only gonna take about three more casts, if that. We're gonna head to a different spot and hopefully we'll crush them there. So nothing on the EPF grub in the pink color. I did bring down a B vibe. I did not have time to use that. This is one of my favorites, just threaded on there and that back tail just dances. But link down below, check them out. Okay, well we're at spot two. Spot two is just a little pond. I've been here before and about the biggest fish I've caught is eight inches bass. So uh, nothing too special, but I've heard that there are some decent ones in here. I mean, nothing that's like crazy big, but it's always fun to catch a bass on an ultralight rod. 
But if you guys are liking the videos, make sure to hit the like button, drop a comment. And um, yeah, I'm kind of just doing like this low budget because I, ha I don't have much time to put into this. But it's pretty much low budget, just kind of showing what my daily routine is after work. I just go fishing and bring you guys along. So if you guys are liking this and want to see some higher end stuff, make sure to smash that like button and leave a comment. It will really help me out, kind of put me in the places that I need to be. The more you guys like this video and the more you guys share this video, um, the more people that gets to see it. If you guys are liking it, make sure to do all the things that I just said. Um, you know, what everyone says. Like, comment, subscribe. Yeah, I'm going to fish this. If I catch a fish, I will show you. But if I catch a bunch of like six to eight inches, then uh, yeah, we're just going to go to a different spot. I'll show you the first one though. Let's get into the fishing. Man, bugs are thick. Another reason why I like to use a bobber too is just the casting distance. If you want to throw small, tiny baits on a bobber super, super far, uh, pick yourself up a rocket bobber. The name says it all. Throw these things about a quarter mile. What is also really, really, really cool about them is they come with a built-in toothpick. So if you do get a fish deep, just pop it out and you're good to go. Like I was saying, that 16th ounce jig head, I just casted it forever. These jig heads too are by far my favorite. Also made by Euro Tackle. I will leave them linked down below, but they come in 1 32nd, 1 16th, 3 32nd, and an eighth. Multiple colors, different hook sizes, two different hook sizes, a number six and a number four. So if you guys are in the in the need of some new new jig heads, they're tungsten as well, so uh, that's always a plus. I'll leave them linked down below. Well, I think this video is gonna turn into bobber tips and tricks. Um, another thing, Another reason why I like throwing a bobber is because uh, it, it works as a topwater too. Um, especially if you are fishing for bass or bigger crappies where bass might be. A lot of times I'm doing a nice slow retrieve with my bobber, just trying to keep my bait at a steady pace in the, in the water column. But every now and again, you'll get your bobber to do a nice little wobble. And when that happens, sometimes a bass will come up and try to eat your bobber. So if you have another topwater tied on, or if you have um, a Senko laying around, Throw that right by where you got that top water blow up and um, well I guess it's technically a bobber blow up but also comment down below have you guys ever had your bobber get attacked by a bass I mean, it's got to happen to more than just me and it is kind of cool when it happens because it's scary it's violent drop a comment down below if you've had that happen to you but yeah just another tip as well the old search bait for bass there we go hooked up feels like a tiny 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 one. Oh, no he's in the weeds yep okay i think i'm out of here that's two of these little ratskies but another bobber tip bobber blow-ups if you haven't heard of them now you have okay we're not out of here yet i lied we're gonna stay for a couple more casts catch two fish come on Oh yeah, we're out of here. What are you thinking? You gotta make at least 50 casts. I'll keep thinking of some bobber tips though. I do love me throwing a bobber. Okay, I already thought of one. There are many, many, many ways to fish a bobber actually. You don't just cast it out there and let it sit. That is one of the ways to do it. Number two, probably my favorite method, is power corking. It's kind of what we were doing at that last place. You move your bobber a foot, you let it sit move your bobber a foot let it sit you're kind of covering water power fishing with a bobber power corking the third way is just a solid steady retrieve like i was mentioned like i mentioned before your bobber is going to do a little bit of a wobble when that wobble is happening i feel like that is about the perfect pace you don't want to go too much faster or else your bobber is going to dive underwater and kind of cause a commotion i mean who knows that might work too but i kind of like it when bobber's got that nice nice wobble to it number four you can drift a bobber if the wind is blowing super hard and they say you have you know a grass edge like this you can pitch your bobber out let the bobber drift down along it pull it up flip it again kind of do that normally that's done with live bait on like a grass line or with leeches on some rock piles 
And there isn't just four methods, that's just the four methods that I normally do. There's probably a lot more, and you can kind of fish a bobber however you want. If you want to move it super, super fast, you can. You, if you want to just let it sit there, you can do that. And uh, pretty much anything in between. You can pop it, pop it, pop it, and kind of never let it stop. Lots, lots of tactics with a bobber. I guess another thing I can add to the, the slow reel, I'm not as much watching my bobber as I am feeling. Because every now and again you're going to get caught on weeds or um, you're going to be reeling a little bit too fast and your bobber is going to end up going underwater. Sometimes it's just the way it is. But I'm kind of just feeling for that bite. You're going to feel a thump and then you're going to start feeling them pull. And once you start feeling them pull, you know they got it. Then you kind of set into them. But you're not really setting the hook too hard. You're not going to be jerking the rod. You're just going to fastly pick up the pace of the, your reeling and just kind of lean back into them. Panfish have really, really soft mouths especially crappies, but if you also catch a bluegill like right on the outskirt of the lip, if you set the hook too hard, you can rip that right off. And in crappies, it happens extremely easily. Using an ultralight rod definitely helps with that. Just know your, know your rod, know your reel. Kind of just gonna pick up all the slack that you have and just lean into them. This one's a little better. Still not like a good one at all. But a little better. This is like a 10 incher, maybe. He wouldn't keep in the tournament, I'll tell you that. Okay, now now I think we're out of here. We're gonna got we got one more spot. We're gonna go try. It is a bluegill spot, maybe a bonus crappie, but uh bluegills are the target. I think I might switch up my plastic when I get there, go with something a little more finessey. Something I can kind of just let sit there instead of having to reel. It's another little thing. Depending on what you're using for like a bait, it's kind of how you're going to want to fish. If you're using live bait, normally power corking and just letting it sit there is the best. And if you're using like a swim style bait, like a paddle tail or a grub, um, the slow swim and kind of just that you can even power cork with it move it a foot you know that lure's gonna come up do its thing and kind of fall back down many options you got plenty of options in bobber fishing okay we are now tying on this gold euro grub it's a 1.4 inch bait look at this thing this thing just dances so nice I don't know if you guys can see, but barely any movements, things bobbing. We're just gonna rig one of these up. Since we are mainly going for bluegills, we are gonna kinda just let this thing sit, maybe move it around every now and again. Maybe do a little power corking, a little slow power corking. But there we go, final product. <whistles> Link down below. Okay, so the first four methods I talked about, kind of all in a row there, okay, this is number five of ways, different ways to fish a bobber. This one I just called the lay down. You move your line just enough to tip the bobber back and have the tip hit the water. So you pretty much just give it a little pull. You'll see your bobber go back, hit the water, and that's all you do. You can do these pretty fast or pretty slow. The fi let the fish tell you what they want. But yeah, it's a simple, super simple, easy technique. And I just, I, I don't even know what it's called the lay down I, I don't know pretty easy but your bobber is normally standing straight up and you pull it just enough to go whoop and then it pops right back up you can do this with slack in your line give it a little harder pop just to move all that slack but if you kind of got your line tight you just barely got to pull it just move the tip of your rod and you'll see your bobber this is kind of what I was talking about earlier about letting the fish show you what they want some days they might want it just sitting there. Some days they might want it slow reeled. Some days they want it power corked. You never know. Try it all. Let the fish tell you what they want. I have been fishing this kind of slow and I did get a bite as soon as I started just reeling it. Covered a lot of water, haven't got any bites. Normally they group up pretty well in this spot. So hopefully a few more bites come. I am seeing a lot of fish surface too. 
So I'm gonna maybe move this to like eight inches instead of a foot, just to bring it up a little bit more. This water is very clear too, so I can move my bait a little bit further because the fish are gonna be able to see it from further away. Compared to the dirty water I was in earlier, I only go about six inches to a foot, but in this clean water, you can go three, three feet, three to five maybe. There we go, that's a fish, be a bluegill. It's fighting like one, oh yeah. <laughs> Let's go, clobbered it. First one, look at that. Nice one. Come on, uncurl your tail. Oh, well, he gone. Bye-bye. Okay, so just moving it up just a little bit worked. And I was kind of just slowly moving that one, kind of popping it and moving it at the same time, but keep my bobber. Kind of doing a fast lay down like I was talking about earlier. Super fast one. Just kind of slowly reeling and popping it, laying it back. Just twitching my slack. Every now and again, you can just let it sit there. So if there is one kind of chasing it, following it, when you let it stop, it gives them time to eat it. But a lot of times they're gonna be super aggressive and eat it as it's popping. But that's cool, first one, let's go. Kind of found a little group, got a couple bites there, and ended up catching that one. That's definitely not a giant one. I do still need to get a fillet knife so I can do a catch and cook for you guys. I have not done that yet, but soon. Once this water cools down a little bit, I don't like eating fish out of like 80 degree water. They get kind of mushy and I just don't like eating fish in the summer. But once that water cools down quite a bit, maybe when I'm out here in a sweatshirt, it's gonna come a lot faster than you guys think. Maybe I'll keep some then. Do a little catch and cook for you. But at middle of the summer, not a fan of doing it. I'm not gonna do it and I need to get a fly knife anyways. But be ready for them, they're coming. Especially this winter. Get, in some, get into some nice crappies. We'll definitely be doing catch and cooks. The, the one thing that is pretty tough about fishing this spot is I don't know how deep anything is. There's no like Navionics for it. Um, but yeah, I could be fishing in 10 feet right here and I only have my jig about eight inches below my bobber. Or I could be in three feet. I, I don't know, I'm kind of just fan casting around and hoping for the best. Hopefully this place freezes up this winter. And if it does, let me tell you, I'm gonna be out here. I think there's some really, really big bluegills in this. And I wanna catch one. I also was just fun fishing here a couple weeks ago and caught a crappie. So I know they're in here and it was like 11 and a half incher probably. Not like a giant one, but a good enough one to let me know that there's some crappies in here. But mainly I've just been catching bluegills and bass out of this. This little spat. Just one cast over here, gotta keep it honest. As this sun's kinda reflecting around this corner, I can kinda see out, I didn't bring my sunglasses, obviously, because I forget everything all the time. But I can see rock out pretty far. Oh no, it was a dragonfly. Dragonfly landed on my bobber, shook it up a little bit. It's pretty calm out here, so every little ripple I can see. Which is pretty sweet when you're pan fishing. For those of you that uh, don't use a bobber and fish for panfish on just uh, a super light jig, what what is your setup? What, what kind of line do you use? How big of a rod? How long of a rod? Um, what size reel? What size of jigs you're throwing? Because I know a lot of people just like to cast and retrieve just small baits for panfish. But um, I've only really fished with a bobber. It's kind of really all I know is just bobber fishing. I couldn't tell you the first thing about what size to use when you want to fish in 10 feet. I mean, I kind of know, but I kind of want to hear from some people that actually do it. Comment down below. Oh, yeah, baby. That's a good one. Decent pie plate there. Yeah. Oh, 
another one, another one bites it does. Good fish. Another bluegill. This one's not quite as big. But <laughs> they got the right size. They got the right genetics going for sure. They are built very well. Oh, that's another one. I might have to switch up colors on them or something. There we go. Hooked up. Bluegill, I believe. Oh, yeah. Bringing back the bobber. Got the old toothpick. Like, this thing's gone. Bingo, we're off. Oop. We're gonna have to fix it, anyways. Colors, you gotta love them. Gotta love those stripes. Purples, oranges, blues, bluegills. Gotta love them. That's a decent amount of fish on this one plastic. I could probably keep using it for sure, but I think I'm gonna change since it's already like coming off. We're gonna go something a little different. The crazy critter brown. Let's see if they like this. I don't see why they wouldn't. New bait, see if we can get the same results. Seems like once these clouds moved out, these fish have pulled up closer to the shoreline. The wind has also kind of picked up and blowing right into this shore, so that could have pushed them up too. But every fish I've caught has been like 10 feet out. I might have to cast back down along this bank just to keep it honest. You know, you know the drill. We are hooked up. Bluegill. On the crazy critter. Just switched up to that. Bluegill. It's a nice one. That one's decently long. I forgot to bring my tape measure again. I have it in the truck, but I didn't bring it out here. Because I don't know why, you know. Sweet. Sweet, sweet, sweet. That one was kind of out there. We are hooked up. I think there's a school that moved in. Another nice, nice one. We're looking for a giant. A giant, giant, giant. 10 pluser. Come on. Oh, there's a, there's a mess of them right there. I don't know if these are just pulling up or if these are the same fish that are just moving now. Let's go with the fat assassin. This is one of my one of my favorites. I like to trim it down too, make it a little smaller, especially if they're short striking, but it works great just by itself too. First cast with the fat assassin. <laughs> Feels tiny, unless it's swimming right at me, which it could be. Oh, it's actually a pretty good one. Big ear tabs on this guy. Super big ear tabs. Long fish. Probably only 
eight, but maybe eight and a half. Big old ear tab. On the fat assassin, first cast. Green pumpkin, you know, staple. One of the best OG colors out there. Looks like everything. Fat assassin. They love it. This is a bigger one too. Pretty not bad. Very not bad. All right, buddy. We will see ya. That was a nice one. Ain't mad at that. Right back out there. I just saw this fish, cast it to it, and then caught it. It's a pretty decent one. Like, I don't think any of these are going to be touching that 10 inch mark, but that might go nine. I don't, I don't know. Eight and a half for sure. All of eight and a half. The widest I can get my fingers is eight. From thumb to pinky, and it's past that, so. It's a good eight and a half. Look at that. All right, let's let this big guy go. Whew. They are loving this fat assassin. We even had one bite the end off, and they are still just eating it. I don't know if I finished what I was saying, but I saw that one swirl. Casted to it, kind of popped it really aggressive, so he saw it, found it. And came over and just <laughs> bobber went down so fast. There's a reason why they call it a rocket bobber. Not only can you cast it a mile, but when they get bit, <laughs> it's underneath. Ooh, I just had something hit my bobber. There's that old bass trick I was just talking about earlier in the video. Literally came up and bumped my bobber. There we go. Gave it a couple aggressive pops. He found the bait. We'll let her go. Bobber fishing, one of the funnest ways to fish. You get to seed the bite. A lot of times, that's the only way they'll eat it. There's a time and a place. For casting and reeling but I do love me a good bobber fishing especially when the pan fish you're going after are really really nice I don't like catching like six inches if I'm gonna go out there and catch six inches nope sign me not up because I do not want to do that I want to be catching nice ones like we are now another one bites of dust another good one dude Uh, oh, yep, that was almost at the barb. Little seven and three quarter action, almost eight inches probably. Just look at the forehead, they're just built. Okay, bye. The half fat assassin strikes again. There hasn't seemed to be any pattern to what size of fish are where. Kind of just all that pretty good size everywhere. I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. I hope you guys enjoyed like the secrets to bobber fishing. My little top five uh, tips and tricks or um, 
techniques. Ooh, what do we got? Right in the outro even. It's a bluegill. Oh, it's not even that big. He hammered it. Oh my. Hen, love to see it. I'm catching a lot of bulls. Hen's good to see. But as I was saying, I don't even know what I was saying, but thank you guys so much for watching. Go down, hit that like button, smash that subscribe button, drop a comment about anything. We'll see you next video. Peace.